Hi, I'm Jason Lucas, and today we're going to talk about the redundancy principle and some good and bad examples. I will be demonstrating this utilizing Microsoft PowerPoint. The topic I chose today is why is the sky blue? First, we will discuss the dreaded bad design example based on the redundancy principle. Why is the sky blue? The blue color of the sky is due to Rayleigh scattering. As light moves through the atmosphere, most of the longer wavelengths pass straight through. Little of the red, orange, and yellow light is affected by the air. However, much of the shorter wavelength light is absorbed by gas molecules. The absorbed blue light is then radiated in different directions. It gets scattered all around the sky. Whichever direction you look, some of this scattering blue light reaches you. Since you see the blue light from everywhere overhead, the sky looks blue. As you look closer to the horizon, the sky appears much paler in color. To reach you, the scattered blue light must pass through some air. Some of it gets scattered away, again in other directions. Less blue light reaches your eyes. The color of the sky near the horizon appears paler or white. Now that we have a pretty good idea of what not to do according to the redundancy principle, let's take a look at a few good examples following the redundancy principle. Why is the sky blue? Well, it has to do with the light coming from our sun. And I know what you're thinking. Well, the light coming from our sun is white, not blue. But actually, it's made up of all the different colors in the rainbow. As you can see here, white light, when you put it through a prism, you can see all the different colors that really make up that white light. We have red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and violet. These different colors that make up that white light from the sun, they all have different wavelengths. Wavelengths are similar to if you've ever thrown a rock into the water and you can see how the little waves come back. That's the same thing here. We have different wavelengths. Some are big and long, sort of lazy wavelengths like the red ones. But then we have the blue ones there at the bottom, really short and choppy. They go up and down, up and down, more of a squiggly line. The blue ones are called, they have a shorter wavelength, meaning, see, the tops of the uh, waves are closer together than the tops of, say, the red waves, where they're much further apart. Light travels in a straight line, unless something gets in its way. If you've ever taken a flashlight outside and pointed it, you see that that light comes out in a straight line. There are three ways that things can get in the way. You can reflect the light, like in a mirror, the, the light goes and reflects. You can bend the light, it can come through a prism, like we saw before. And you can also scatter the light. The light can come down from the sun into the atmosphere, and it hits all the little molecules, and it gets scattered all over the place. It's this scattering of light that makes our sky blue. Remember that the blue light is the one that has the wavelengths that are choppy. They're the short up and down. While the other waves, such as the red, are the long and lazy uh, wavelengths. The, the short and choppy blue light hits more particles in our atmosphere. There's a bunch of little molecules, gas particles, up in our atmosphere. And the blue light hits those. It gets scattered all around. So when we look up, we see those blue little uh, wavelengths hitting those particles and getting scattered all over the place. That's why we look up there and we see the blue sky. 